All right. How are you all doing? I hope everyone is having a, uh, a great day so far and had a good yesterday. I'm just going to hit the start recording button. Good morning. Welcome everyone to our live trading room here at Admiral Markets. So glad that you could join us today on Thursday, 13th of June, 2013. And we'll be looking at the charts just in a second. Uh, as usual, we're just going to review a quick PowerPoint to uh, to make everything clear. So before we start, the usual risk disclaimer uh, showing you or making you aware of the fact that global financial markets is considered high risk. Please be aware of that and also seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. Uh, this video and recording is for educational purposes only and webinar. All right. So thank you for your attention on that. Let's with no longer ado, look at our um, live session here today. My name is Chris Forsick and I welcome you to our session here from 745 London AM. All right, let's see. I will be trading my own money, so let's see how fair I will, how well I fare, <laughs> how well I trade. Um, today's strategies, we'll be looking at the London Open as usual. Uh, let's see, maybe this time we'll get a trade out of it. And uh, most of the time, breakouts and uh, and sometimes maybe if we can catch a pin bar, um, please let me know. I told you yesterday the setup I'm using, so please make me aware of it if you see something. And uh, we also, or I suggested and took some um, long-term position trades as well. So let's see how those are doing, and some swing trades on the euro. Right, the euro made that move down, but and up as expected. Um, breakout strategies is just a uh, basically just a breakout out of a resistance or support just like these black boxes show these are consolidations corrections whatever you want to name it or call it um, it's just a sideways move and then we get a break one way or another most of the time in the same direction as the trend take a look at the MRR markets social media and uh, we can take a look at the calendar first of all we don't have anything I think but we can take a look um, we have some medium impact news, like for example a euro, Italian 10 year bond auction, but nothing on the pound. And only really the USD core retail sales and retail sales and initial jobless claims has high impact today. That's later on in, uh, at the beginning of the New York session, New York Open. So um, let's move on and take a look at, I still have it on the CAD I see. Well, <clears throat> the CAD uh, finally did break. Uh, yesterday's high that I was talking about, right? So that's looking very, very impulsive. I mean, a tremendous uptrend on the day chart, on the week chart, on the four-hour chart, on the one-hour chart, <clears throat> almost on all the levels. If you look at daily highs, daily lows, if you look at fractals, tops, bottoms, however you look at it, it's an uptrend. So that looks pretty good. Now, of course, the, the thing is that there's no guarantee that we're going to break this resistance at the top in one shot. Actually, there's a fair chance we're going to respect that top in some way or another. It doesn't have to be a major respect, but some respect will be there on a lower time frame maybe as well. So let's see. Um, but, uh, you know, that, there, after that respect, we can see a push through to new highs. All right. So looking good so far, the euro dollar as well, that long term position that I took. Um, but we'll take a look at that maybe in a bit later because the first thing I would like to do is actually, before I forget, is take a look at the pound dollar. And um, the euro is moving nicely to the upside. The pound is having a bit more of a headache actually. Um, having triple top here at the moment. Right, right at this bigger top. So not really moving all too fast to the upside. Let me change this to, to black. Like this. So we did have some upside continuation, not as maybe as nice as the euro yesterday. That's because after that news event, the euro pound was moving up actually. Um, so that's why you could see that translated in the euro dollar moving quite nice to the upside, the pound dollar in the New York session, kind of weakish, only 50 pips, 50 pips here. <clears throat> so that's because of the euro pound that eventually did move up. And we can see that 
otherwise we're pretty nice trend line here. Oh, that disappears. Okay, <laughs> let me add the four-hour chart otherwise quickly. Like that. Pretty nice trend line, quite steep on the four-hour chart, but uh, nice channel maybe. Uh, so we're moving back maybe to the support. You can see the moving averages. Last times that we moved back to those moving averages, they uh, they did bounce at those levels for more upside. So maybe we'll see a turn here as well. Um, but the London Open Trade is a bit different, right? We're going to take a look at the first five-minute chart to identify 5 and 7 a.m. with vertical lines, which I'll do right now. Once again, these, this trade is only initiated after at London Open until one hour and five minutes after London Open. Then everything that happens is after that is not valid for this setup. All right, and something like this. Then I'm going to put, um, let's see line here and a line at the tops of that between 5 and 7 and the bottom and uh, no so what we're looking for is a consolidation within that zone and um, we had a spike up and down spike up at 8 pips or 7 which is quite usual so maybe a break of this bottom, probably eight pips. Let's see, that would be 156.60. So anyhow, I don't want to confuse you. First of all, this setup is invalidated, all right, unfortunately, because we already had breaks of this zone. So just not to confuse everyone, that I'll take it away right away so we don't look at that anymore. All right. So, but in general, I do know that usually a bottom gets broken by eight pips, especially early in the morning, and then it actually causes the opposite. So, anywhere around 660 could be a bouncing spot. Um, let's see if we put a fib on here. It's kind of funky looking. This 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 upside is so not so nice with triple top here. I suggest taking a look at the euro. It looks better set up to me. I don't like the formation here. It's very iffy. To, I mean, I'm sure there will, there's a high chance eventually we'll get a bounce here, <clears throat> but maybe the euro looks a bit better. So I suggest moving on to the euro. Um, let's see. This is the day chart, and yesterday we we were say, I was saying, remember, watch out for this. Any time that we make a retrace of this day candle, we're going to see a push. So what, uh, what I suggested was to fib this move, right? We're not going to break this bottom. And we bounce off the 618 fib here for a nice move up to target. So uh, I personally suggested to take profit at this trend line, right, which worked well. So I hope you got some pips there. I certainly did, and uh, hopefully compensated a bit of the loss on that smaller trade in here. Um, and you can see also here the moving averages nicely use the support for that upside. And we had yet another. Let me get rid of this fib. Yet another positive day yesterday. With a nice wick at the bottom. And now even clearer break of this level. So that's looking good. So the bigger target could be this uh, 134, I, 134.40 area. There's a big 786 fib at 135. Uh, as I expected, we are pushing through the 618 at 133.40. As you can see, we already have an entire day candle above it. So. You know, didn't expect much resistance there. The 786 is a bit different. I think that the 786 will act as a decent, you know, resistance, and we'll have to see how price reacts to that level. If we if we get a like a smallest correction, I think definitely uh, another upside is is in the cards. 
if we maybe get, for example, a more of a, a faster move down and then a slowish move up, then probably one more, at least one more move down before maybe a bigger upside is, is more uh, probable. So we have to see how price reacts to that 786 and then I'll judge which of the two is more likely. But a move up to that 786, uh, I think is, is, yeah, we're getting that, let me say it this way, we're getting that confirmation of that uh, right now because we're, we're putting a day candle above the 618. So that's, that's the confirmation we're looking for actually. And um, so any retrace here should see that continuation. Uh, let's see. Now we're still at this trend line in a way, so I'm not sure if we'll break immediately. You can see here too, although we did have some nice upsides of 80, 100 pips, I think. Um, it is still in this channel, and if we're at the top of the channel, we either break it with a nice impulse, or we respect respect it and then get a bounce here. I don't expect the at least at minimum. Yesterday's low shouldn't be broken right in here, which which is let's see where's yesterday's low. Let me put it right in here, and maybe even today's low. I doubt it, almost. Although it's a bit early, but uh, yeah, not sure about that one. At least this one, I don't definitely shouldn't be broken. Otherwise, the uptrend is uh, is definitely in danger. Definitely in danger. So these should be strong support levels. And actually, to be honest, maybe even higher, as I said, this one, or this trend line. Because the euro clearly breaking this bigger top, I mean, we're definitely above that. We're definitely above the 618, so looking a bit better than the pound to me. But um, not saying that the pound upside, I think, also will materialize, but the triple top is kind of maybe a reason that... Uh, it could happen later and less strongly than the euro. That's why. Does that make sense um, to everyone? <clears throat> First of all, I want to make sure everything is clear to everyone. Besides, of course, catching nice pips. That would be nice, but I uh, also want to make sure everything is clear. So if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Okay. Uh, we have one actually right now. Utam, the moving averages are FIB numbers. So that's I use 144, um, I use 89, for example, I use 55, 34, and 13, or in that case, 12, but the idea is 13. So otherwise, I use all FIB, num FIB numbers, 8. <clears throat> you could even, I don't use it, but possible. So the, the, the common denominator is FIBs, FIB sequence numbers. Uh, let's see, if we can go long at 133.15. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's see, we can zoom in now to one hour chart actually. Now that we've done some analysis or like directional guidance, let me say it this way. Um, so let's see, we, if we fib this move up, we had a 382 bounce, as you can see. So yesterday, what we were looking at this point, right? Yesterday, we were, we were analyzing it here, and it made that down and up. And let me put that fib on this move still. Sorry, sorry for the many fibs, but basically there are two fibs, okay? <clears throat> There's this one. That was yesterday's fib. I still want to keep it on because I want to see where this target is. We respected this target, the minus 272, but I still want to see where that 618 is. And then after the 618 bounce, we went to target and then made a 382 bounce, as you see, and just reached target here, actually. You see we're respecting that 272. With a wick, do you see that? <clears throat> so that could be a reason, maybe just like we had here, the 272, a bit of a retrace. That could be maybe a reason, could be a reason that we make it. Doesn't have to be, could be a reason we make a retrace. If not, then uh, let's see, this 134. Um, yeah, that that's, could be a small pause as well here, but could be very small and a continuation. Most targets do get respected, but it doesn't mean that they get a major respected. It could mean a two-way sideways move and continuation. Um, so once you get more experience, you'll know which target has a likelihood of getting a lot of respect, 
which ones may be less. It depends on the time frame, and it depends on um, how big, how crucial the support and resistance levels are. These are smallest targets. These are like one hour targets. So <clears throat> they, they will not cause, usually speaking, that much resistance. They will cause a small pause. And the major resistance is the 786 Fib, most likely at 135. I don't think these, the recordings are sent out, by the way. I, I think that you should be able to find the recordings in the video archive. If you, if you do want to review or see something still, then I think you should be able to find it in the recordings. Uh, someone's asking if they're, so just one question, folks. I, I hope you don't mind. So give me some patience on that. I'll just answer this. Someone's asking, if um, why the up move and uh, well to be honest the currencies don't like to break they, they tend to avoid breaking something crucial so we had very crucial bottoms here um, so we had a, um, a very strong up move and then after that 3 or we got a retrace like this and when we approached this bottom with this down move, that caused the bounce, as you can see, which is logical because we're getting to a support area. So that's what caused the bounce. All right. Then this, there was a 50 fib here that apparently was big enough to to send it a bit down. But when we put, we, when we went again down, oh, sorry, when we went again down, we we you know bumped in again to the support and this trend line here. So that was enough to to send it to the upside. I guess the support levels. We're, we're strong enough to hold and not to break. And that's why we got a bounce. And um, instead of a break to the downside, we actually broke this level, which is not really a major, 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 major resistance. It is definitely a resistance. This would be a lot more difficult to break. Once we reach that level, you, I doubt that you'll see a break in one shot like we do now. We will also see a respect and a, a respect from that level and move down. Then it depends. Um, if we step, if we see buyers step in somewhere here for a break to the upside, or you know, we'll have to see. But major resistance and supports aren't broken that easily, so that's one of the reasons why you you saw here a support coming in. <clears throat> okay, but for those of you, I know that I don't know if you like Ali Wave Sashi, but to be honest, it's because I use Ali Waves and I expected a bounce here. I, I wrote in my articles, I still remain bullish, even though <laughs> even though it was moving down here. Uh, I, I still saw a high likelihood of a bounce and a turn to the upside. And that's because of Elliott Wave. So, but I don't know if you like it. Uh, many of you don't, so it doesn't make sense for me to go into that that much. But it did make me totally expect the upside here. And when we saw this happening, like that, that was to me already a sign that we're building something of an upside momentum, an upside support, and that takes long to build. Why? When price moves up, we're still in the downside, so you get sellers, but then you get buyers again, then you get sellers, you get buyers again. But eventually, the long, the upside, you know, just building higher highs and higher higher lows here, higher lows, sorry, and then we finally get the break. And once we broke here, that's when you got a lot of impulse flooding the market. <clears throat> and my one of my strategies is, is is built the one that I explained yesterday is the um, strategy of the weekly and day chart. That entry would have been here, and that entry is right here as well. But if you don't like any waves, then you can just look at support and resistances, fib numbers, to measure the psychology as well, of course. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let's take a look at that uh, idea of Kalen about. So let's move to the one-hour chart again, uh, and analyze it a bit. One thirty-one fifteen. I think one thirty-one fifteen is is nice. To be honest, I like it. I don't know if we'll get there necessarily, but if we do, it's a nice fifty fib. We can leave the fib on here because. Um, you know, or we could move it a bit here to this target. Either way, it's well. Then it would be a 618 fib. 
So it doesn't really matter. Bo is 60 or 50, 80, 6, you know, let's, let's leave it like this. We'll incorporate this new price action for the moment. The reason why I didn't want to do it at first is because we don't have a fractal here yet. So I didn't want to move the FIB there yet, as yet, because we don't know yet if the market is really going to pause there yet. We need two candles to the right, two candles to the left, and then we know it's a, you know, it's a clear moment of pause. So usually I don't move the FIBs until I, ha I see that, just to explain why um, I was doing that. Okay? So I'll still maybe leave it like this. All right? And if we do get a fractal here, I'll move it up, for example, to here, and we can change the FIBs. But for the moment, let's see if we get a, maybe a double bottom at 382 or the 50 indeed. And that would be trend line back to the moving averages. That would be the same as this one and this one and, and this one, right? All getting upside at those levels. Unfortunately, all of those upsides happened in New York session and not in our London session. So the London session has seen retraces, counter the trend, and the New York session has seen with the trend trades. But I hope that, I hope if, if you see the value of trading with the trend and not focusing on those corrections to the downside and an uptrend and focus on with the trend, I, if you see the value in that, I'm already a very happy camper and a very happy Forex monitor person. <laughs> so because um, I've, you know, that would be, I think, already such a, a great wisdom that I think that, that um, if you didn't see before this, less, this sessions with, with me, but you do now, I'm already very happy. And if you did already see it, perfect. You did a great job. You know, you're well on your way. But if you were a person that was focusing on those down moves while the euro is steaming up, I really hope that you see the value now of, of focusing on that upside and not focusing on that downside. Is there anyone in here that, that sees that now? Because I think it makes it's more worth your energy to do that. Well, if not, then everyone was already well on their way, so that's perfect as well, of course. So. But I think it's just a lot less stress and a lot more pleasant trading, to be honest. Um, anyhow, so that's that's definitely a good idea. Now, you know that's not going to happen in our session, to be honest, because before it reaches this level. You know, you can already see it visually. That's going to take four candles, three candles. These are all, one candle is one hour, right? So that's going to take three, four hours. So that will probably be again New York. Um, that's not going to happen now. Now, one thing could happen is that this time around, we don't get this correction to the downside, but we get an immediate impulsive move to the upside. That sometimes happens because, um, the market is so in agreement that this is so bullish that we get an impulse into the 134-ish area, maybe maybe even up to 135. Who knows? That is quite quite a big move, but it is possible. Well, actually, 135 is only 100. It's only 140 pips. So let's see. Let me take a look at the day candle. The day candle is currently opened at 133.30. 170 pips is a quite a big day candle. But it's possible. I mean, we've had here day candles that are like 170 pips, as you can see. This one even bigger. So yeah, we could see 135. It it, it would be a definitely a, a pretty big wick uh, day candle. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. See, this is 138 right in here. This day candle is 138 pips. So 170. Well, we can put an average true range otherwise quickly on it. Let's see. Um, where is it? ATR? Uh, 96. So it's... Yeah, that's because we had quite a sluggish move here. So you can see that the ATR is hanging lower than, than this area here. Here was very low actually. It was very high, as you can see. So not bad, I guess, but average on average. 
So maybe not 135, it's a bit ambitious, maybe somewhere here in the, around the 134.50, 70 area when we reach those targets, then maybe we'll see one more smaller correction tomorrow, one last push up to the 786 tomorrow maybe, and then at the end of Friday when the market closes, maybe some, some move down. Something like that I think seems the most logical path for uh, the rest of the week, maybe. That's a, you know, it's always iffy with the time factor. But. Anyhow, um, so let's, let me get rid of this. See currency hitting this target and moving down now. Um, so, yeah, back to what I was saying is that an impulse here would still be interesting. So let's see if we can, because this is not going to happen now. So the only thing I want to look at is if something of a break of this trend line immediately would happen. That would be interesting to catch maybe this break, maybe up to here, something like that. <clears throat> Yesterday didn't fare too well, so I want to be careful with that um, on the smaller time frames. Let's see. Five minute world getting a hook back here. Uh, let's see, we have definitely here our hourly low and some bottoms as well. It's iffy. Uh, we could definitely see support here and, and a move up. Or we can see something that I said already just a while ago was something like this. Maybe one second. Something like this. And then like that. <clears throat> so that's always tricky. That's why mm, I like one hour to be to be to be honest, I like one hour charts the most because it's clear, everything is very clear. Um, you have a 618 bounce, you have engulfing twins. If you didn't take the bounce, and the engulfing twins sends this nice thing nice 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 enough. All right. Uh, so I'm more of a one hour trader. I know that Tarantula is more of a five minute trader, but so for me to take a trade like this is always more risk than waiting for a bigger move up. Um, so a bit iffy. Especially we got some wick here as well. Let me take a look at this five minute chart right in here. All right. And I'll take a look at the 15. I'm looking at the oscillator so that you know what I'm looking at. I want to see how strong and how far it has traveled. Um, yeah. I'm trying to determine if I really like buying it here at this smaller support, at this 15 minute support for, for maybe that continuation or if I really just rather sit tight and wait for that correction to happen and then take it like like yesterday. And well many of these bounces basically. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not too fond of this this I guess it's I mean, this would be probably, let me see if everything is aligned. This is retracing a bit. This would be the five minute setup that, that we're looking at. If this turns here, I think, I think everything is lined up. But I'm not, I don't know, not too big of a fan of it. Probably, you know, the fact that uh, I don't like it. Probably this means that it will work, but <laughs> uh, because I, I don't know, not too big of a fan of it somehow. Mm, I like yesterday's more somehow on the on the five minute euro dollar. Mm. 
So, well, let's see. I'll think about it in the meantime, but I don't want to bore you too long. Let's see. If, if we get a break maybe of this, that could be signal that we're moving above this trend line more, uh, let's say, more convincingly, right? Because if you look at the one-hour chart, we have, and I'll zoom in. I don't want to make it too small here for you. We have this pretty neat channel here. I can correct the line a bit like this maybe. Look at that. Very nice hits. I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits in the meantime. So maybe a weight of this high would be more secure, I guess. Difficult. For our for our candle doesn't look that convincing either with this wick. Let's keep an eye on it. I'll still think about it. Um, but in any case, the the swing swing momentum slash long term vision is for sure up. All right. The question is, will we break? immediately when we break this high or from here. Uh, just like yesterday, nothing changed. So let's move on to some other charts. Um, I wanted to take a look at our usual Aussie and Yens maybe, if you're okay with that. What's happening with this pound dollar? Went a bit further, went to 156.56. So a few pips lower than what I thought, but it looks like we're getting a bounce now. But here, I don't know. Mm, we are back at this trend line. Yes, we are. But um, let's see, three. Don't like this impulsive candlestick at the moment, plus this triple top, as I said. So I would want to see some one-hour price action that says we're uh, bullish again. All right. So let's move on to the Aussie. The ATR, by the way, just in case you were wondering, because we were putting on the we put it on the chart, is the average true range, and it indicates the average movement the currency has made in a certain period. I, you should be able to change that period. So that's just a good indication of of uh, how volatile the currency is. Oh, sorry, Richard. Richard said something about the euro, actually. <clears throat> Let me go back to that. Let's see. Good point. Let's take a look at the diver if there's any divergence. There certainly is on the one-hour chart. Uh, ongoing divergence here because we had a very strong AO and these AOs here are are lower. So that is a good point. On the one hour chart, it doesn't concern me that much unless we have uh, maybe some multiples, really like two or three. This is still kind of like one in my opinion. Maybe two, but yeah, maybe two. Um, it would worry me more if we have divergence on the four-hour chart, though. All right. <clears throat> so, also, by the way, I don't know if you remember, but just to give you some feedback on the AO as well, is that remember yesterday, or this was last week? Remember that I said that this AO is so strong that a break of that top is very, very, very likely. Well, that just shows you that that's what happened. You see, when you have that's some extra guidance and extra guidelines and extra tips you can use for yourself. If you see something like this, such an impulse, and an AO that is that strong with resist any resist major resistance is broken, and you get a correction like this, the chance of that blue circle being broken is very high. As you can see, also that happened. Right? So just as an extra, just thought of it now because we were talking about the AO. So let's take a look at the four-hour chart. And the four-hour chart is just an ongoing movement, actually. So we don't have any divergence as yet. We have bad divergence, but not proper divergence. So anytime, anytime 
this AO reaches the zero line, that would be yet another good probability of one more upside when the AO in a four hour chart gets to the zero line because the AO doesn't have divergence and the chance that we'll get divergence before we make a substantial downside is high. So anytime this AO gets to the zero line, the chance of another break at the top is high. Um, let's take a look at the day chart. Day chart still building to the upside. No divergence here either because if we compare these tops to this new these new highs, we're converging. So the only thing to worry about is one hour divergence, which we did reach the zero line here, which indeed I guess would make it maybe a small double double divergence, which could mean could add another reason why we see a, yet again a correction and then well, maybe one more up move. All right. Uh, eventually, this upside is going to die out a bit and we'll get a bigger correction on the four-hour chart. Um, all right. So, personally, I think it will happen next time. Then we'll probably see the bigger four-hour correction. And this four-hour, this this correction in here will bring the AO back to the zero line. So something like this, I think. This will go to the zero line, and now we should see one more upside. Well, that's actually exactly <clears throat> what I was saying, right, with regard to the what I what I think will happen this week. So that ties in with the AO pretty nicely, actually. But one thing I want to warn you of is, is that because we do have double divergence on the one-hour chart, good spot Richard, is that the only thing that could happen is you want to be maybe a bit careful with with any trade longs on a one-hour chart, at least, not necessarily on the day chart, right? Uh, when the currency does move up towards this top, that could be maybe a good reason to move your trade to break even because uh, because of the double divergence, we could see respect of that top and maybe one more corrective down before we make up. So that's that's one one thing that the one hour divergence might do. All right, the Aussie. Uh, made that upside to the to the 618 minus 618 fib that we were talking about yesterday. As you can see, right to the pip actually. Wow, look at that! Couldn't be better. Um, we were somewhere in looking at it in here, I think. Uh, no, maybe here. Let me take a look. Somewhere in here, actually. Sorry. <clears throat> so we still made that small push up because uh, we had a, a pin bar. Remember here, this daily pin bar moved down to the 382 and then um, up to this target. And fib, 50 fib of no wait, yeah, 50 fib of this down move. And we had many wicks here at the top. And I traded this personally for a small trade like this here to the downside. Didn't go f too far though. I was looking at this break. And um, let's see. I was thinking that it could be interesting to trade if we maybe break this this support line. Well, I don't know if it's a support line, but this bottoms because that could be interesting downside here. The Aussie in a major, major downtrend and we had a decent one hour pullback but uh, we are moving down again making lower highs and lower lows so if we break these levels here it looks like we could get a, uh, a nice continuation down to the 92.50 or 90, yeah 92.50, 93-ish, 92.50. So that was something that I found interesting. Uh, let's see what else. 
the yen could be interesting as well. We we broke out of this chat this this up upward channel trend. We uh, broke out of this rising wedge already a long time ago. As I was warning for in other places, uh, broke out of that rising wedge of the bl the black and top orange line. That's the rising wedge, and we broke. We went to the bottom of the trend channel, broke out of that, and we even had this this sideways support line. Maybe <clears throat> even that we broke yesterday. So, wow, massive, massive um, momentum shift at the moment on the day chart, at least to the downside. So this too was a nice trading. I traded this to the downside yesterday in New York session as well. Um, we got the bounce at the 786 FIB, remember? And we saw that upside, but then we saw a continuation. So I'm going to take this off. Just going to quickly add the 886. I thought I had it on my chart. Guess not. There it is. Good. So we had a 786 bounce, precisely, actually. Very neat. And um, very nice impulse to the downside. We're reaching quite close to this target, or, or we were already very close to it. Let's see. Yeah, no, it's still 25 flips away. So the next major support level on it, this day chart is right in here. So let's move back to the four-hour chart. That's still a while from here. And let's go to the one-hour chart. Everything nicely in the day, day uh, <coughs> sorry, in the downtrend, right? So some more downside continuation looks pretty good actually to me. I traded personally yesterday in New York session. I traded this downside here. Um, let's see, we had some nice continuations here and even here as well during the Asian session. And here a small pause, but yet again a continuation. That looks nice for downside, but the, let's see. If, personally, I'm looking for something like a correction like this to, to trade a break to the downside, for example, right? So we don't have that. You can see that this we don't have here. If we would have it, that would be very interesting. Or at least if we had this kind of correction, that would be still okay. This is very small. <clears throat> Typically, I don't, I hardly trade those small ones. But so let's see. That doesn't look like it's going to happen actually in our session, to be honest. But something that maybe you can take into consideration as well, if. Um, if we see one hour correction off this 2722 target, for example, like uh, like this maybe, anywhere back into maybe some resistance in here, and uh, we see a, a candlestick pattern bearish right in here, and then later on we see maybe a break of this trend line, for example. Then uh, any break in here would be uh, good trading until at least this level, I would say. <clears throat> okay? Let's see if something else is setting up that is interesting for now. Uh, let's see. Maybe the Aussie, right? But I have to keep an eye on it. Um, let's see. Euro. I'm just curious what the Euro is doing.
you know, let's see, we'll, we'll probably get a bounce, but I'm not too excited about it. I'm going to, I decided that I'm going to skip it personally, but um, it could be a bouncing spot right in here because we have the stochastic turning. We've got a, uh, a wick here, kind of a five-minute turnaround here, so could be upside here, but I'm not too big of a fan of it. So I'm going to move on and take a look if there's some other opportunities. And um, let's see, maybe on the other charts. Let's see. This is the pound New Zealand, for example, or maybe the euros in New Zealand we can take a look at. Um, if you, by the way, oh, that's a pretty big daily wick here. Wow. <clears throat> I didn't realize that actually. I didn't look at the day chart yet on Euro New Zealand. By the way, once again, if, if you see anything you like to trade, you can always ask me and I'll give you my feedback, of course. It's just a feedback. Maybe it's something that I find interesting as well. And if there's anything unclear, because I want to, above all, make sure that everything I say is, uh, is clear to everyone so that there's no miscommunication, then let me know, okay? So pretty big wick on the Euro New Zealand daily. That's a bit tricky. Um, now, of course, that massive upside was bound to uh, have some kind of, you know, some kind of moment where it stops, the madness to the upside stops. It doesn't necessarily mean that the uptrend is over, though, in my opinion. But we could see a bigger correction maybe because of that wick. So interesting. You see what kind of uh, momentum this upside has on all of them. Euro odd pound odd pound New Zealand. Look at this angle of this moving average and look how much it's being torn away from these slower ones. Wow. This is the four hour chart. And we had a bounce here. The safest trading actually, to be honest. If you're new, I think, is using the four-hour chart. And if you identify a trend and you see price moving back to these moving averages, maybe even this one, those are, I think, the best <coughs> moments, actually, to be honest. Four-hour chart is very neat, I think. It's one of the, I think, one of the least difficult charts or the easiest chart to, to trade, in my opinion. Hi Graham, you ha how are you doing? But looking at this impulse here in the four chart, it's quite strong. This could be a hook back for one more correction, maybe to this this level, and then another upside. Because another another upside, I think, is definitely in the cards. Just look at that power to the upside on this MACD and probably on the oscillator as well. Uh, head and shoulders, yeah, that's a good observation as well. Thanks, Graham. Kalen didn't even see that, but that could be one indeed, yeah. Especially because it's a strong impulse like this. Could could definitely be resistance here for that one more upside as, a, as yeah, as just said a second ago. But the that could be definitely a good observation there. Um I'm not sure if it's really yeah, what would be the neckline? I don't know, something like that. Would I be interested in the neckline? Not me personally, because I expect uh support at the one forty four moving average. Let me add that. Hmm. Sorry, folks. Um, some technical problem. My 144 EMA is not visible somehow. Hmm. 
maybe I reached the max of moving averages. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. The 144 EMA is quite far, actually. Wow. It's all the way at 162.20. Um, yeah, so maybe, maybe, but I don't know. As you know, I'm not really a big counter trend trade, so uh, although it would be a break of this low, and we would already have lower lows and lower highs, actually, that is true. I would say that anything in here is still major support because of this 144 you made. That's always a big bouncing area. Uh, and the day chart, let's see. Yeah, that could have, here you can see some, some support in the day chart. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Let's see if we get that, if that happens indeed. Um, but a good observation on that chart pattern there. Um, what else to say? Well, it was still a good uptrade, actually, as I said yesterday, I think. I'm not sure if it was here. Um, that that we had, you can see that once you had a, a correction like this, a break here was still a nice momentum. So nothing wrong with that, but still, still the question: Will we get now that we're moving down? A bounce in here is not not you never it still could happen because we still have support levels here. But um, it is a quite aggressive down move. So I'd rather be more careful and wait and wait for a confirmed price action in here. If we do get that price action confirmation of a turnaround, I still think it would be a good trade because we're still in uptrend, right? But I wouldn't go along blindly on anything that I see here unless I get some really good confirmation because this is kind of threatening indeed for maybe something like that and then up. And we broke this. It's a very steep line here, but we did break through it. <clears throat> so that's, that's warning us that that very, very massive upside is uh, could be having some problems indeed. Then again, just because that massive upside is toast doesn't mean that we'll necessarily get a major correction. That's always the tricky part of corrections. Kaylin was talking about the euro odd. Okay, let's take a look at that. The euro odd, uh, well, actually the euro New Zealand has a better head and shoulders to be honest. This kind of crooked in a way. Maybe would you know it looks a bit funky. Your New Zealand actually looks a bit better. Uh, let's see. Ta -ta -ta -ta. What was I looking at? Yeah, inverted indeed. Yeah, all of them have the same structure actually. Your pound is even pound odd. So that's going to be it is a bit tricky because of that. Alrighty, so maybe some maybe in that case <clears throat> I was thinking that person I was thinking if we do get a break above, for example, that's what I had in the back of my mind. That's why I wanted to look at these, is that if we break, for example, maybe if we find support here still, I was thinking. Because you know me, I'm trying to trade with the trend, always focus on that, so I'm not you know, interested in the downside. If I thought if we do get a bounce here, I don't want to take that bounce necessarily here, but I thought if we break out of this trend line right here, I thought that would be an interesting trade setup. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen, actually. I mean, we're, we're still moving down right now. We, we had some upside here, but 
I don't know. At the moment, it doesn't look like we're going to get the break. You never know. We could still push push up and up, but it looks iffy now. So, but that, that's what I had in the back of my mind. I wanted to look at this one in our session because I thought if we get that break, we're still in a major uptrend, and apparently things are still going up. But already, uh, so uh, that's 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 the euro odd pound odd euro New Zealand pound New Zealand doesn't look like we have an opportunity on those. So I, I suggest to move on, but if you just have some patience, I'm going to answer some questions in the meantime. Um, I saw your question, Graham. I just don't want to... Um, I think it would be annoying for people if I constantly answer questions. You know, that's why I didn't answer it yet. Um, because sometimes I know that that could distract people <clears throat> when we're analyzing, so that's why, okay? Um, Graham is asking, on average, how many trades per day I take and uh, what's my daily pip target. It all depends. To be honest, I trade, I trade long term. I trade swings. And with you, I've taken a few intradays, but I, I don't really do it a lot, to be honest. Um, so most of the time. I hardly trade on Mondays and I hardly trade on Fridays, first of all, uh, unless something is very, 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 I, I set the bar very high on those two days. It's very, very hard, high. Because I noticed that most of, you know, if I just skip those two days, actually, it probably really, at the bottom line, doesn't affect much my profit and loss. <clears throat> Meaning that it's kind of, I take wins, I take losses, but it doesn't help me that much most of the time. So I, I tend to skip those two unless I see something very nice. That's the first thing. So I, I, what, I, what remains for me, unless it's, a long, unless it's some very long-term position, right? That's something else because then the whole character, I'm talking about swing trades, in fact, to be honest, and pin bars. Not intraday trades because, uh, I mean, um, intraday trades for sure. I'm skipping on Mondays and Fridays most of the time. Uh, or not most of the time, I should say majority of the time, I should say correctly. Uh, or almost all of the times, and swing trades. So intraday trades, I would only take on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Swing trades on those days as well, and, and long-term positions basically probably any day, as long as the setup I have in mind is valid. Um, and how many that is? So that, that, that's the conditions. Uh, well, I trade small and I trade multiple accounts, but uh, let's see. I guess the breakout trade on the one hour chart on average gives me probably five trades a week and I don't take all of them so I just focus on a few. Um, then some other swing trades, uh, one or two or three, then some long term trades maybe one on average maybe a week. This week it was the EuroCAD and Euro USD. So what is the total? I guess on average, what would it be? Da, 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 da. Five, maybe two, two a day, I guess, two, three a day, something like that. It depends also, it's also sometimes evenly, unevenly dis distributed. I think that's probably one of the most difficult things to, what took me very long is the patience to wait for something I really like. And I certainly got impatient at the beginning, wanting to have a trade now instead of waiting for the market to move into the position that I wanted to be before trading. That's maybe the one of, I thought, for me it was one of the most difficult things to, to learn. <clears throat> no, I know that uh, that always depends from person to person. Maybe for you, the most difficult thing is um, I don't know the what, once you're in a trade to wait for the take profit. For example, I have no idea, but just speculating. But you know, everyone has their own thing. So that was always difficult for me because the I always thought that I had to trade right now. There was always had to be something, and or if I wasn't in a trade for a certain time, I got like, ah, oh, that I need a trade now. Not, not that I said it to myself, but the behavior was like that. 
I just didn't recognize it at the time. So I feel very patient and very okay with waiting for traits to materialize. No problem. So that's good. I think it's good. And it depends from week to week as well. Like in NFP week, uh, I would scale down the risk. I would take less trades. Um, it depends on the month even. December, scaling down. August, scaling down. So those are all factors as well. Alrighty. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Just a few more questions, folks. I hope you don't mind that the Q&A. Um, Okay, glad it helped, Graham. Perfect. Great. So yeah, that's that's my average. But I, I do look at um, I do look at n a number of strategies. So actually, looking at considering the fact that I look at quite a lot of strategies, the amount of trades I take is, is low. I think. So I really try to pick the, the nicest of the, all the strategies I know of and I use. Actually, not know of, I use because I know of more strategies that I don't use. So. But so I guess anywhere between around two, sometimes three a day would be the average. Let's see. Um, next question: Do you have any bad experience in the beginning days? Kaylin says. Uh, I wouldn't say bad. I would say just good learning experiences. Nothing bad, really. Nothing that. Mm, just the usual steps that everyone, I guess, I think most go through regarding you know how you look at setup and your own psychology but nothing bad nothing bad i never lost 50 grand in one day or something like that uh luckily enough um let's see dollar yen let's take a look at the dollar yen someone's asking a question of dollar yen after that i will start looking at some other currencies so so that I don't bore maybe some people who want to see some charts. Okay. Let's see. And uh, maybe we'll still start find an opportunity on the in the other currencies. Okay. Let's see. Dollar yen entered dollar yen earlier since again there's evidence of potential bullish divergence. Okay. So Richard is saying there's potential bullish divergence. Plus, it hit his weekly 382 fib at 94. Plus, a target. So, let's take a look at that. Now, I like the analysis. I like the thinking. You know, it it's shows that I think you are looking with um, an interest to the charts and trying to find good analysis. That's a great job in any case, Richard. Um, that's 382 fibs, so maybe the entire move up you're looking at. Oh, nice job. Interesting. It's a bit lower. It's right at the 272 target, isn't it? 93. What would it be? 93.60. We reached 93.77, 76, I guess. 70. Yeah, that's 10 pips away. That could be considered a bounce already. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> I would never trade. Yeah, I guess never trade just purely on that, right? Personally, um, unless yeah, you could, in theory, use this maybe as a support level to put the stop loss, which would make it pretty small for a weak chart, basically, because it's a weak weak fib actually. And in a way, the th yeah, the thinking is interesting because we did get a massive correction. But if you look at this, it's still an entire uptrend, and a level like that could definitely be a bounce. True. Good spot. Good good thought. Um, now I don't know how you would want to trade something like that. And if that's something else, if you wanted to trade it, then I would say probably. I would say four-hour 
some four-hour candlestick formation that hits the 382 and bounces that looks bullish or maybe even a hook back and double bottom, those would, could be ways to trade that, I guess, that bounce off this 382. Now, looking at the momentum, uh, the problem is, or not the, yeah, the question is, will, will that level hold or not? I think it will, I think it will, but I would rather have the confirmation because of that, so it's such a strong momentum to the downside, I would rather wait for the confirmation. But if you can find a way, looking at candlesticks and price action, to use that analysis and to sneak in there along when you see a confirmation of that uh, bounce, that would be very cool, I think. Take a small risk, maybe, because it is, you know, it's kind of, it is definitely risky. So you, you might want to reduce your risk, standard risk to something that uh, you feel very comfortable with. <clears throat> Good job, Richard. Um, now, if you see price action moving very slowly, like this, you might want to move that trade to break even, for example, because then we could see the next fall as well. There could be bullish divergence, hidden divergence indeed, in the sense that if you compare this bottom here to, to this oscillator, you can see the oscillator has made a lower low, but the, the price has made it's still a higher low. I mean, we don't have a low yet, but if it were turned right now, it is a higher low. That would be actually hidden bullish divergence. Uh, so we don't have that confirmation. We need a clear turn here and a break of this trend line. But then once that happens, we, we would have that bullish diver hidden divergence here. Now, if we break this low in the upcoming days, then that is invalidated. So let's take a look at some other opportunities. Uh, we, what do we have left, actually? Um, we could take a look at the New Zealand. We could take a look at the Aussie yen, pound yen, euro yen, pound Swiss yen, dollar Swiss yen, USD CAD, euro CAD. I guess that's what we have potentially left. Your dollar really not doing much. Look at that. It's just it's just really has gone sideways for 30 minutes in between a 10 pip range. Not much as yet. How about this pound dollar? Same thing, really not much of a movement here in this one session so far. Uh, what's the euro pound doing? Ouch, look at that up move. Hmm. So let's see. I'm not touching the euro pound unless we, we break out of this this level or this level. As you know, I was stupid enough to not execute my own trade plan correctly because I wanted to go above, along above here. I just put the entry too tight. That was stupid of me. That was uh, kind of a mistake that will go in my evaluation, uh, you know, evaluation sheet for myself. Um, would have saved, would have saved me um, this down move here. You know, didn't intend to take it. Shouldn't have been actually in that trade, right? That was not the goal of myself to take that trade. And if I would have executed my trading plan correctly, I would not have been in it. So that's a bit a pity. But um, after that down move and the news event, we got some upside again. But I'm not touching it, at least we break this or this. Uh, let's take a look at the Aussie Yen. I see someone was asking something on the Aussie Yen as well. And it could be interesting, so let's take a look at that. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it here. One second, I'll just add it. Oh. Sorry, that's the Aussie New Zealand. Alrighty, let's take a look at this Aussie N and uh, see what we can expect 
uh, on the movement, all right? If uh, if we get some bigger bounce or can we expect some downside uh, continuation? Now, it certainly has been a massive move down, first of all, 100, all the way to uh, 88 here, or 89. Wow. And it, that's one of those things that you can use price action to your advantage. You can see here an impulse, a very weak price action, and then a continuation. <clears throat> so it's one of those things. You can see an impulse, correction, continuation. You'll see this rhythm everywhere. Upside, correction, upside, correction, upside, correction, upside. That's the rhythm of the market, correction. And it goes from level to level, whatever it may be, from support to resistance to fibs, whatever it is. Whatever it moves, whether why it moves, you know, what, <laughs> the other way explains it, but it doesn't really matter in a way. That's how it just how it moves, right? In waves from, from up to down, impulsive corrective. So anyhow, yeah, I'll get distracted again, sorry about that. Um, if we put a fib on the downside, you get a six eighteen bounce. Wow, all the way to this minus one two seven two where we bounce off very neatly, and this two seven two we bounce off neatly. We're moving down again. So maybe this maybe, just maybe. This minus 1618 could be a bouncing spot. That's 88 ish And if you put a fib, maybe as Richard was doing here, oh, we just bounce off the 618. So yes, there are indeed hunts, many various fib levels here that could play a role. Um, Also, one thing is that we're back at these tops right in here, something we should be aware of. Now we're going to zoom in, okay, to the lower time frames. I just need to do this. <clears throat> Let's go. Yeah, there's no doubt about the power to the downside, as you can see. These, the gap between these moving averages is increasing and increasing and increasing. The angle is tremendous. The price has stayed under the green moving average forever. So any, you know, it's just any speculation of a bounce here is, is, is nothing I would trade myself to the upside. If you're in shorts, then you might want to be careful of anticipating further continuation through uh, those levels right in here, where we have the fibs and support and resistances. Because, yeah, that's true, Hans. It does look like we're getting into that zone where we could see a bounce here. I agree. I wouldn't speculate on anything to the upside personally, but if you're in shorts, you might want to think about taking profit here and rejoining once it breaks, for example. If it breaks, that is true. We could put some fibs on this entire downside and see how it does. Just want to see what the most accurate fib is. Recent fib. So I need to start from the very top to get an idea what what is the best fib for this four-hour chart. And I'm slowly moving the fibs along. As you can see here, nice, nice target, nice 50 bounce to target continuation. That was the most impulsive move down, right? So I'm constantly going from FIB target to from FIB bounce to FIB target, FIB bounce to FIB target.
Let's see, this was a almost a 50 fib. Yeah, close enough for me. Where is that target? That's right at the 88.70, and we reached 88.90. 20 pips. It's close enough for me. That, that target could be taken out. We might still see a small fall to that target. That could be it. So, yeah, I would be very careful in this zone, but um, any move up could still definitely bounce, you know, find resistance in the new fib we can put on our chart here. For example, the 32, 50, 618, 786 for downside like this maybe could happen. Then we'll have to see if we get a continuation. A break through those levels or do we get a bigger correction? Let's see. Um, the Aussie yen was a nice trade as well yesterday. All the ends were very nicely set up, to be honest. You can see here, I drew this trend line. And of course, we, no doubt about it, we had this massive four hour downtrend, right? And I drew this on the one hour chart. We had a nice break in New York here of this, <clears throat> unfortunately, in New York. And the day before in Asian, we had many breaks. Um, we had a nice correction like that. I drew it a bit like this. I think I did. And we had some resistance here. And when we broke this support level, we had a nice downside. But that was all the ends. I mean, Definitely don't take them on all of them, but <laughs> they all had the similar structure. So that's how you can monitor um, corrections. Of course, use downtrend, no doubt about it. And on the one hour chart, we have a nice correction. And then the break of that correction sees a continuation of that downtrend. So that's, that's cool. So let's see. Hans could be totally right. It could depend, uh, you know, what the dollar yen does could depend on um, the recovery of the economy, for example, he's saying, or the uh, what and how the Japanese are reacting as well, how they act. So let's see about that. Definitely. So I'm gonna. We have 11 minutes left. I still want to see if there's some opportunity. Maybe we can find. Um, let's see. CAD is approaching these bottoms. So maybe what I would like about the CAD is if we break this bottom, if we break it, we pull back and continue, that would be maybe a good one on the CAD because we do have nice space to the 786 here. Nice space there. So break, pull back, continuation could be interesting. But not right now. I'm not interested because it's moving back towards the bottom. It's halfway. I don't know. <clears throat> Let's see. Maybe it would have been interesting a bit earlier on. I didn't think about it. Let's see. That is seven. This broke a bit earlier in our session, though. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't see this, but that could have been maybe. I didn't look at the cat to be honest. I was more interested in the euro odd, I thought, but all right. This was pretty nice, nice break here. But it happened. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you could have. I didn't realize it. It's a pity. It could have been an opportunity, maybe. Well, anyhow, that's past. Doesn't matter. Um, Still thing that remains, in my opinion, is a lot of pips if we break that bottom. But I wouldn't, you know, if you take the immediate break, look what happened. You get, you get taken in and look at that, the opposite. 
that sometimes happens if you break a bottom. You don't necessarily get that follow through and you get a, uh, a move like that. So that's why the advantage of a break, pullback continuation, because then you get that second confirmation. So that's something interesting on the CAD, I think. Let's take a look at the EuroCAD. EuroCAD making higher highs and higher lows almost on all time frames. And I think no matter what time frame you look at, maybe except the monthly, it's, uh, it's an uptrend. But we are getting some retrace here at the moment. Sorry for changing the chart so fast. I just want to look at this day chart. Um, so these levels in here definitely still support. Let me draw that green. Here too. Any move down should see continuation upside. At least to this 137, then we'll see maybe again a resistance. Let me zoom into the four hour chart now. Even these levels, I would say support. So maybe we'll see a bit of downside. We are getting some bearish momentum, so maybe we'll see some downside like this. But then sooner or later, we should see a bounce. That could be interesting as well on the EuroCAD. Um, let me take a look at gold. Gold. Well, someone asked for the US dollar index section, I think. It was a while ago, actually. I hope that person is still there. Not sure. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're approaching the 618. Not sure if that will be the bouncing area looking at, at the bullishness of the euro and the pound, but who knows. Could be the 786, maybe. Or let me fib this move. Actually, that's maybe the incorrect fib. Uh, if we fib this move, sorry, if we fib it, I don't know why I had that there. Then the 786 is still a bit further down, as you can see. So maybe maybe move down and then a bounce from that trend line in 786. Let me see if I gold. Gold, to be honest, I'm not interested in gold myself because it's been moving so slow that I, I lost interest at the moment. This is the day chart and you can see since the, I think it's like 20th of May, it's just like gone nowhere. So either a break of this low here for me or a break of this high would re re like peak my interest again. Otherwise, I'm not really touching it. It's very simple, actually. But if we do break this green top, I think we do have a chance of reaching this top, and then a chance of reaching the 1530 level, which is a massive bottom. Right in here. Uh, if we break this low, then we have a chance of reaching 1250, which is a FIB target. All right, cheers, Richard. All right, glad that it helped. Very happy about that, okay? Let's uh, hope we get some good trades next week and have a good weekend and see you soon, okay, Richard? So that's gold. Let's see, anything else I wanted to, to look at with you? Cat, we looked at Pound Swissy. Pound Swissy, we also made a nice downside yesterday. I missed it, to be honest. It was pretty interesting. Um, break right in here, actually. Look at that. Nice break as well. Hook back, continuation. This too, <clears throat> not ready to trade because we're making an aggressive move up. I need something like a channel like this. That's what I like on the one hour chart or 15 minute chart mostly one hour charts um, and we're back at the bottom of this trend to the downside so I don't see anything really interesting at the moment on pound Swiss C. maybe the dollar Swiss C.
No, not at the moment. Maybe if we get a, a move back to this trend line, could be interesting resistance or this trend line maybe. But I would rather wait for the break than the bounce. Um, that's about it, I guess. Ozzy New Zealand made a great break. I think I warned everyone about this one as well. I'm not 100% sure. I think I did yesterday. Does anyone remember? But that was a nice break here too, of that trend line, of this wedge. That was a cool break. Uh, uh, let's see. That's about it. I think that, that those are all the currencies I look at on a regular basis. I know there are some others like CAD Swissy and Odd CAD maybe you look at, but I don't really look at those that often. The Euro dollar indeed getting some more downside uh, pressure. We have some, we have a wick now. And, and a bearish candle. So it, it does look like we are indeed setting up for that correction just like yesterday. And most likely we'll see the bounce. That's what happened before. So let's see if it happens again. Um, if we do, because we do have a bit of divergence I think here on the Euro, do we? Didn't we say that? Yeah. Do be careful when we, when we bounce here <clears throat> be careful around this area. So we could see maybe a bigger consolidation zone, who knows. I think I already said that, but alrighty. I guess that rounds it up a bit earlier than usual. This time, usually we go a bit overboard, I mean not overboard, but over time, but um, not today. Naturally, and it ended right at this moment, to be honest. So thank you, Patrick. I'm really glad that you attended today for the first time. That's awesome. And I'm glad that you enjoyed it. That's great. Um, I hope next week I would like to see, it would be really awesome if we get some structure on a one-hour chart that's, that's waiting to break. Because those are, my, those are one of my favorites um, setups, just like four-hour retraces to uh, to the zero line on the uh, on the AO, for example. That doesn't happen always that regularly, as you can see. But those are one of the sweetest you can have. Because look at this, for example, on the or less, even better maybe on the Aussie. Once you get those moves to the zero line here, those are nice trading. It doesn't happen often. That's right here. That's why the Aussie, that's why I was actually interested in the Aussie, right? One of those reasons why I'm looking for a break of this level is also because we're back at the zero line on the four hour chart. <clears throat> but we didn't get the break, unfortunately, in our session. I'll go back to the four hour chart now and zoom in a bit. So that's this support level. <clears throat> All right, that'll be interesting for me if we break it. Not sure about it because it could. Looking at the this kind of impulse, we could see one more impulse up before we, you know, bump into or run into bigger resistances. But let's see. So those are my favorite. I hope we get one of those setups uh, next week in our time on the one hour chart. So we have some nice swing trade maybe that we can monitor um, throughout the week or at least the day after. Alrighty. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here and I um, hope to see you on Tuesday. Uh, thank you so much for uh, also for your questions and involvement and uh, hope uh, that the uh, the Q&A sometimes didn't disturb you too much with the in between the analysis. And uh, wish you good trading tomorrow. Be careful tomorrow is a bit risky always, Fridays. And have a great weekend. All right?
cool. Thank you for your thank yous as well. <laughs> all right. And uh, see you all soon. Cheers. The organizer.